Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful day to be inside. Um, I'm Steve Katz, director of the National Institute of Arthritis and Musculoskeletal and Skin Diseases. I can say it in one breath now after almost 16 years. And um, this is really a great day. This is a day of celebration of where we've been and where we're going. And we have a, a real heterogeneous group of speakers uh, who are going to touch upon uh, some of the major scientific advances that we've seen and uh, many of the uh, advances that are anticipated uh, with the investments uh, of the Institute. Before going into any detail uh, about, the, uh, about my own view of the, uh, the Institute and where it's been, we do have the pleasure of having uh, Francis Collins give a welcoming address. And um, over the years, the NIMS has supported research projects that address the complex processes contributing to various conditions uh, affecting the public. We know that because the diseases that people have that are a part of our mission are certainly those that are common, chronic, crippling, and costly. And that's the message that I've tried to give to each of the directors uh, of NIH during my tenure as, uh, as the uh, uh, director. Because these diseases affect virtually every single family uh, in this country and perhaps around the world. To commemorate our 25th anniversary, you've already see th seen the string of the banner, to commemorate this, uh, the uh, 25 years of research, training, and information dissemination. We created the banner that will be hung outside the door for you to view throughout the day. Granted, we could have had 100 banners, so there, are, there is more missing than is there. But we, we still are trying to cover some of the exceptional discoveries, advances, and accomplishments that have been made by the NIMS community. Our goal was to highlight a few of the Institute's accomplishments over the past quarter century by producing this banner that provides a representative snapshot of NIMS activities. Our basic translational and clinical activities over the years, diseases of bone, muscle, joints, and, research and, and skin, our interactions with researchers, clinicians, patients, and the public, and our support of the NIMS intramural and extramural research community all of whom are represented here. We're going to leave the banner up for the rest of the day, and we invite you to peruse it during the breaks and at lunch. A copy is in your program. And it will also be, be featured on our website for some time. I'm sorry that my dear friend and colleague, Dr. Larry Shulman, to whom uh, uh, Francis referred, uh, who's featured prominently on the banner, uh, passed away before being able to celebrate the Institute's 25th anniversary with us. Many of you remember Dr. Shulman, a world-renowned rheumatologist who served as the first NIMS director from 1986 to 1994. Starting an institute is a little more difficult in many ways than continuing one, putting together all those standard operating procedures, et cetera, et cetera. He deserves a tremendous amount of credit. He, success he successfully guided the development of the institute through its formative years and played a pivotal role in facilitating the growth of our intramural and our extramural programs. We at NIMS will always be indebted to Dr. Schumann for his tremendous vision and dedication to the Institute and its public health mission. We also owe thanks to Dr. Michael Lockshin, who led the NIMS as its acting director in, for about nine months following Dr. Schumann's retirement. He is another key member of the NIMS who could not join us. However, I was delighted to receive from him a wonderful letter wishing us all good success today and in the future. For me, it's really an honor and privilege to follow both of these colleagues as institute director for the past 16 years. It, it is an unbelievable privilege, uh, not only to be the director, but to work with so many wonderful, devoted, passionate people about what we do. And uh, I, I repeatedly emphasize that the NIMS staff is one of our institute's most valuable resources. I'm talking intramural, I'm talking extramural, and I'm even talking about our council, who we consider our staff for three days every year. The scientific advances and research initiatives we support 
are possible because of the contributions each and every member makes to fulfill our mission. I'm glad to see that so many of you are here today and share my enthusiasm for today's scientific uh, uh, symposium. We bring together various presenters and panelists who will highlight a subset of scientific advances made possible with NIMS support, describe how these advances have improved patients' lives, and address the future directions for NIMS research. Now, how do we decide on this program? Well, we decided on the program because we wanted to have a balance be, uh, that represented all of the institute input and all of the institute uh, interest and all of the contributions that come from so many different spheres uh, within the institute. So while we take stock of what the institute has accomplished and what it can accomplish in the next quarter century, I want to remind you that our nation's commitment to reducing the burden of arthritis and musculoskeletal and skin diseases extends well beyond the formal establishment of the NIMS. So we go back a number of years. The seeds of the Institute were planted 60 years ago as an arthritis program in the National Institute of Arthritis and Metabolic Diseases. Additional reorganizations led to the Division of Arthritis, Musculoskeletal, and Skin Diseases within the NIDDD, which was National Institute of Arthritis, Diabetes, and Digestive Diseases. And as I tell my good friend Griff Rogers, uh, we broke them off from us in 1986. And uh, fortunately, they are still striving as, as uh, thriving as the NIDDK. Uh, he doesn't buy that, but uh, anyway, I tried to sell that. Some, uh, in, 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 in bringing these, uh, these changes about, we've had many, many uh, champions uh, in the Congress. And some of these champions are very well-known public features, such as the Honorable John Porter, from whom you'll be hearing this morning. Others are members of established organizations for physicians, researchers, or patients and their families. And IMS is proud to collaborate with over 70 such groups. And this uh, coalition that I'll be talking about a little bit later uh, really has been revitalized uh, to a point where it has a tremendous impact on, uh, on the public because it is the interface between the public and the, uh, and the, uh, the investment in uh, research and training. So they're the people for whom we all work, whether as scientists or administrators, to ensure that the NIMS continue producing the discoveries that are necessary for them, the public, to live longer and healthier lives, quality of life clearly being a very, very high priority. Now, during the next sessions of the program, we're going to hear from several esteemed scientists and members of the patient and advocacy community. We've asked them to address some of the scientific advances over the past 25 years to give a global view, not to go into tremendous, uh, tremendous detail, and to describe how this new knowledge has improved patients' lives. We couldn't cover all the diseases that we uh, have made advances in, but we tried to, to feature some from each of the, uh, the parts of the Institute. This means that, uh, that uh, there's much unsaid in today, far more unsaid than is said uh, during the program. But just as an increasing number of basic research discoveries are revealing connections between what used to be perceived as disparate organ systems and diseases, the stories you'll hear today are echoed across all aspects of our NIMS mission. So not only is there tremendous collaboration across the, the, the divisions, uh, of our institute is tremendous collaboration across all of the NIH, and all you have to do is 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 see the, the amount of leveraging of resources that go on between uh, institutes like ours and the National Institute of Aging, for example. Uh, Francis talked about uh, Mr. Oss, the uh, the osteoporosis study in men, or the study of osteoporotic fractures. Uh, tremendous interaction there. A tremendous interaction with the. Uh, National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease with the National Institute of Diabetes, Digestive Disease, and Kidney, and many others, the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences. So this is really how the NIH works, and this is how it works best, rather than to be in silos, but to interact with, uh, with lots of people. 
So the sessions are structured such that all the presenters will deliver brief talks and take questions as a panel after, their, uh, after they speak. Our moderators will, will ensure that we remain on schedule, and our three moderators are uh, Dr. Bob Carter, who's our deputy director for the last two and a half years. It should also be noticed that, uh, uh, that uh, Steve Hausman, I, th I think I saw him in the audience, is, uh, was the deputy director for many years here. We appreciate your, all of your inputs for all those years. Uh, the other uh, moderators today are going to be, in addition to Dr. Bob Carter, uh, Dr. Susanna Serrata-Stein, who's the director uh, of our Division of Skin and Rheumatic Diseases, and uh, Dr. Joan McGowan, the director of our Division of Musculoskeletal Diseases.